Hello, everybody. It is a great pleasure to join you all and to close out this fascinating look at the tools we have to build resilience in the face of climate change. Uh, as I think everyone knows that the challenge is very deep. It's what you've been talking about in front of us. As long as our society remains powered by fossil fuels with uncontrolled carbon pollution, the storms hitting us will keep getting stronger. The wildfire seasons will keep getting longer. The high sea levels will continue to rise. And um, the president, President Biden really understands that this is an urgent crisis. He's laid out a really bold agenda to get the, the country on an irreversible path to 100% clean energy by 2035 and net zero carbon emissions by uh, 2050. And while it's critical that we decarbonize our economy as quickly as possible, the fact is the emissions that we have already produced have baked in changes to our weather patterns that are going to still unfold over years to come. So what you spent this morning learning is that we don't have to wait around to see what those changes hold for us. And before I get into that, if you don't mind, I just wanna say a few words to the folks who are doing incredible work at our national labs at Argonne, but others as well. Um, uh, but since we're at Argonne, the, especially the wildly talented researchers and scientists there um, and the folks who are also tuning in. What you um, managed to pull off, it's really, um, I mean, to someone like me, it's just magic. It's, I'm speaking beyond what you do on the climate and on clean energy and energy efficiency, which I know occupies just a fraction of your time and attention. I'm talking about what you do in your pursuit of your broader fundamental science mission, your you're reimagining the bounds of what humanity believes is possible. You're unlocking the answers to our biggest questions. You're inventing technologies most people can't even conceive of in their dreams, making it, making it possible to deploy them at scale and ready them uh, in many cases for the commercial marketplace and clearing the way for America to win the future. It is so critical, not just to DOE's purpose, but uh, to this overall administration's vision and certainly to the future of the nation. And I don't want or intend to uh, in any way get um, political here, but I do wanna acknowledge the, the feelings of some in our DOE family. I, I know that in the past few years, not all, but some of our staff at our labs um, have felt uh, ignored or attacked or slighted, not all, but some of you may have had um, studies blocked or delayed, or you know, maybe even felt that the integrity of uh, the work might have been put into jeopardy. Um, the suspension of diversity, equity, inclusion efforts may have made some of you feel unwelcome, and many of you, um, many of you have watched uh, colleagues who have decided to leave. But hopefully, those who may have felt that way again, not everybody, but some. Um, I hope that everybody feels that, um, that we are on the same page now. Whether you experienced those feelings or not, please know that President Biden and I certainly share a deep and abiding respect for all of you and all you offer to the country. You are the crown jewels of DOE, as it's often said, and we will recognize and support you accordingly. So um, you see, all of that in the investments that the president is calling for with his budget and with the American Jobs Plan that he is hoping to get through Congress. We're betting big on scientific research and development. We're betting on American ingenuity. That means we're betting on you. We take our guidance from you and from the facts and the data that you uncover. And you at the labs, you have already shown us some amazing things. DOE's labs were able to map out, for example, projected spread of COVID-19. I know you've probably talked about that. Labs like Argonne help the energy industry and states understand the risk of natural disasters on critical energy infrastructure. I know you've talked about that. These labs can tell you the state of our nuclear stockpile and how these weapons would perform without any physical testing. It's amazing. They can help a city like Los Angeles figure out what they need and how long they need to transition to 100% clean energy by the models and the tools that they are developing. And as our conference attendees heard uh, throughout this morning, we can crunch and model this data quickly 
to see the future of these climate uh, impacts. So Argonne scientists and researchers are aiding the development of the highest resolution capability for climate impacts analysis on the planet. And you do it by enhancing our ability to make predictions down to the granular, down to the local level. And it gives us a one-two punch to respond to the climate crisis. Even as we work to mitigate the threat by uh, decarbonizing our economy, we can understand better than ever what the emissions we've already generated are doing to our communities and our landscape. And we can you know, look ahead to see what the future has in store for us. And we can, we can use that powerful information to adapt, which increases uh, community resilience. And it's especially critical for, for disadvantaged frontline communities, often lower income and communities of color, which are already feeling the impacts of climate change. I know Shalanda Baker uh, talked about that. And we have the tools to help communities, these communities navigate the storms that are ahead, literally. <laughs> the thing is, uh, the outputs are only as good as the data that we input. And the most reliable data comes from the ground, directly from these communities. So, you know, frankly, at DOE, we don't have enough time to build the relationships that are necessary here all on our own. But many of you have these connections and can bring them to bear right now. So whether you're with a state or a local government or you're in the private sector, you know, we need your help. We need your partnership. And, and I can promise you this will be an all-win proposition. Argonne is working with a handful of universities right now, collecting and crunching exactly the kind of data that will give us a granular look at what's in store on the hyper-local level. And um, it's going to allow us to improve the models that help us to plan those resiliency projects, uh, the ones that are needed to protect vulnerable communities. Um, as you've heard, it's going to help cities and regions plan for resilience in the face of whatever mother nature will start throwing at them. And these communities can, can gain insight into how to change construction codes, for example, so their, their buildings can, can withstand stronger storms and heat waves and cold snaps. And it'll tell them where to build new housing so that their residents don't sink their savings into a home that later um, struggles with flooding, for example. We're, we're already doing this kind of work with AT&T. We're using their data on their telecommunications infrastructure, infrastructure all of us depend on in an emergency to sort of to understand what steps AT&T needs to make to uh, safeguard their network from the increasing, increasing dangers of extreme weather. And let me just emphasize it, that the work to make our communities and our country more resilient to the impacts of climate change will only be possible at the scale we need with this American jobs plan that the president has proposed. Not only will our labs get more support to help advancing this, to help advance this modeling and uh, to bring it to more and more communities at scale, but we will also have the money to rebuild our infrastructure in these communities in a way that anticipates the extreme weather that the models tell us is coming. So think about what that would mean for a place like, like Texas. What if the models could let us see ahead of time the, the flooding that another Hurricane Harvey would cause or when the next deep freeze will hit? We can map out what parts of the power grid to, to prioritize for weatherizing, where the demand is gonna surge. We can map out how to balance it, how to keep the system running and we can get our residents prepared. So next time, rather than anyone shivering in the cold after a grid failure or wading through waist high water in their home, they'll ride it out, cozied up with their families somewhere safe and comfortable because we've warned them. So the point is this, that these once in a century storms are showing up more regularly and they're going to keep coming, but not all of them need to be crises. If we work together, we can take hold of this future. So, so I'm asking for your partnership. Let's tap this great American ingenuity that has delivered the world's most incredible technological breakthroughs. Let's show the world that even against a challenge as great as climate change, we can adapt, we can grow more resilient, and we can thrive. Thank you so much for attending and thanks for all the work that Argonne is doing.